So we want to talk about having the having a square wave and looking at what the Fourier series might be of that square wave. Um, this is a really good example to kind of not only take a look at how do you calculate a Fourier series uh, and how to think about in general how do you calculate things with orthogonal basis functions, but also how does this start to approximate something that looks like the function that we're looking for in the first place. Uh, and try to getting used to a number of these different concepts. Okay. So to start with, we're going to start off with a, with a square wave that looks something along these lines. It's going to be basically starting off at zero. It comes up and then it comes back down. It's going to have a period roughly of two, have a period of two milliseconds. And so then I know that t zero is two milliseconds, which is one over f zero. Cool. Uh, the first thing that's very useful is this also is going from minus one to one and it crosses at zero. So there, what's useful is that there, the, the average value of this is basically near zero. The DC value, if you want to say, is near zero. Um, the average value is zero. So basically, when you look at for the, the, the sort of bias coefficient, a zero, not there. This is great. So one term down. So then we're going to look at what happens for the other coefficients, so sort of the a sub sort of all of the ones um, going further. Now, one of the useful things in looking at this problem is to know that it has odd symmetry. So it goes from minus to plus, minus to plus. And that should give you a sense it feels like a sine wave. And in fact, if you look closely at this, that although a Fourier series can have cosine and sine in different phases, the nice thing about this one you can see immediately from a symmetry is that it's going to be an expansion of sines. And so we're going to go directly at the sine function as or orthogonal function. So anytime you can bring in intuition into solving a problem, you should always use it. Um, and then always go back and check and make sure that it actually fits. But um, that intuition often is very, very important for the understanding. So what we then end up is going well from half the period to minus half the period. This is the structure we have. Well, x of t for the upper half the period is just 1 x of t for the lower half of the period is just minus 1. So that sort of looks like I'm taking sine of something and then subtracting basically sine over the lower part of the axis. Well, one way to think about that is that's exactly, you know, these two things are basically double each other for the odd harmonics. It's 0 because they're exactly identical for the even harmonics, so they, dis they, they disappear. Well, for the odd harmonics, then, the ones that haven't disappeared, you can end up saying this basic term of 2 times integration of sine and kt, et. So they basically just the 2 pi, pi k that's needed for the integral, and you go to cosine. No problem, it's in cosine minus k pi. Well, if it's an odd term, that's going to be minus a minus, so you're going to get a 1, so you get 2 back. For the even ones, it just goes to zero again, which is fine, because we already knew it was zero, so no, no surprise there. And it's four over pi k. And you think, okay, that's great, but does it actually work? Well, let's take a look. And so here's that same square wave done before, exactly on the same value. And we're going to put some of the harmonics, and I'm going to scale them up. I'm actually going to scale them up by three, six, nine on terms of an offset, just so you can see them all at the same time. And what you see is you see a square wave. The first one you see is a sine wave, and you go, huh, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, you kind of go, okay, I can see the structure and the shape. You add just the third harmonic, so just the second term, and you realize very quickly this starts to feel like a square wave. You can start to see the shape of the square wave, but it's not very sharp at the edges here, and it's a little wiggly. Add the, the fifth harmonic, it gets steeper, at the seventh and ninth, and you start seeing something that starts feeling this, starts feeling very much closer to this. You can also see how much it's getting flatter at the top. So it's becoming gradual approximations. Now it's true, you keep going this for a very long time, it's going to get going to infinity, it will approach the solution. Um, and in certain places it approaches better than the others, but that's just something where you begin to see that. You can also see how the coefficients are, and I've plotted this now in the sort of stem plot in the typical um, sort of looking at complex values. I did use plus and minus because there's no phase. It was just easier to plot it this way. Sometimes you'll take the stems and plot the phases on them. Both will work. 
but you can kind of see the very rapid drop on the coefficients and again the rapid drop on the minus coefficients. So you get a very nice sort of approximation for a square wave out of this, out of this approach. Really nice, really nice sort of possibilities here. Um, and often we will end up using a lot of these sinusoidal solutions for a square wave. Uh, the same kind of mindset will then get used if you want to solve uh, for other functions that are typically periodic and to figure out, okay, now how do I, how do I come up with a good Fourier basis solutions for those as well?